have Jason Abraham with us today, and you are in the Lake Tahoe area, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm Susan Leedy. This is Adam Lavender, the founders of Mods for Quads. And Jason is our next High Fives athlete that we are interviewing. Um, again, we want to just kind of capture some of these outstanding athlete stories, what they've done to catapult their healing process with mind, body, soul, and spirit, and hear his story. So the first question I'm going to ask you, Jason, is to just kind of tell us about your injury and the day it happened. Um, yeah, so uh, I got injured um, while I was skiing at uh, Squaw Valley on April, April 9th, 2015. And I was skiing in an area called the Palisades. And um, for my injury as a photographer, and I was actually up there to shoot photos. And um, anyways, I was done shooting photos and decided to take a run with some friends and um, dropped into um, an area off the Palisades called Main Shoot, um, a, a shoot that I'd skied probably 50 to 100, 100 times before. And uh, just made some GS turns and was kind of coming to a stop uh, where like my friends were and just caught an edge and tried to correct myself, picked up some speed and um, ended up falling and kind of tumbling. And I must have hit the back of my neck on kind of like a harder ice bump and um, yeah, so I dislocated my C6 vertebrae and um, I was helivac to Renown Hospital and spent 14 days there and then um, spent almost three months at Craig Hospital. So you were a Craiger too, huh? Yep. yep. Wow. Um, so tell us, like, tell us more. Tell us the the play-by-play -play in your head in your emotional being um yeah i mean so when it happened i was definitely conscious um but i knew right away that um i was paralyzed couldn't move just tingling in my body um obviously panicking um not you know like i wasn't in pain it was more just uh panic because i knew that life was uh, <laughs> about to take a drastic turn. And um, so, yeah, I was surrounded by friends and ski patrollers and it all like, it, the evacuation process was super quick. Um, I was in a, I was at a location on the mountain where it was pretty easy to bring a helicopter in and get me out of there. And then I think uh, pretty, quick into the helicopter they must have given me some kind of drug because I don't really remember much of the helicopter ride until I got to the hospital and, and like you know I remember going into surgery and um yeah I, I've seen my wife down at the hospital before surgery and um yeah and then it was just kind of 14 days in the ICU that was uh that was kind of just Laying, laying around for the most part, trying to figure figure out what's next. So you tell your your life before you were married, kids, photographer. Yeah, I'm I'm married. I have a um, a, a ten year old son who was uh, four at the time of my injury, um, and yeah, I was a I was a um, action sports photographer, bartender and um nice. pretty oh, active skier job. mountain biker sort of anything outdoors i could do kind of kind of person living life large huh yeah so, so the surgery that you did was it i mean what what did they do to your was it your spinal column that that they were operating uh, yeah i mean i think they had to um kind of reset the c6 vertebrae and then um, they fuse C five, six, seven. Um, but it wasn't like I was, I think most people are in a neck brace longer cause I didn't really break anything. 
Uh, I didn't have any other injuries. Uh, I didn't have any bruises. It was literally just, I just hit that like wrong spot. And uh, yeah, and so that was that. But um, yeah, I mean, it put pressure on my spinal cord and um, so. Think did enough to, to have a result, huh? Yep, yep. Uh, the next question is like, what are the biggest challenges or setbacks that you faced in your recovery? Um, uh, well, uh, the biggest challenge, obviously, or, well, not obviously, but my, one of my biggest challenges and still one of my bigger challenges to this day is just um, some of the things that I anticipated doing with my son. Um, I, I can still do um, quite a bit with him, but not being able to ski with him um, to the extent that I'd like to, uh, just like not being able to do sports and whatnot with him um, mm -hmm. is definitely, like I, I can, like I, like I go mountain biking with him. And there's definitely things that we do together. It's just not, um, at the level that I'd like to be able to do it. I think skiing is probably one of the bigger challenges. Um, I just, yeah, I anticipated just skiing with him all the time. That's kind of what I did, was doing a lot with him before I got hurt, so. Teaching um, him everything you know and. Yeah, so, um, and, and I found like ways to um, do what I can, but um, I, it's, it's, that challenges me a lot, um, uh, you know, and then just sort of just like the everyday, um, struggles, um, you know, using the bathroom, showering, um, sex, all, you know, like that stuff is, I do it. It's just, it's a, cha it's a challenge. Like. Yeah, Adam and I were thinking we should even have like a whole course on just sex and all the impacts, you know, to the marriage, to the relationship and. Yeah, um, yeah, just not, not being able to do all, like, you know, not being able to help the way I should be able to help is just always, always a struggle. Um, but, you know, you, you find ways to, do things that you didn't do before that are helpful in ways that weren't helpful before, so. So we were talking earlier, I, I don't know that I recorded this piece, but just to tell the audience, I mean, now you're, um, you've adapted to a lot of the athletic side of things. So you're doing skiing, mountain biking, um, rugby, what else did you say, surfing? So you yeah, I do adaptive surfing. Um, some, like, I get in like um, their RZRs, which is like a motor uh, motorized, like side by side. Yeah. Uh, so. so what is your life like, like now as far as career and, and are you working or are you able to work? How does that go? Um, yeah, I, I, I help my wife. We have, she's kind of become a photographer at this point. Um, so, um, I sort of help her run that business and kind of do some uh, uh, production coordination and uh, photo photography management and asset management. Um, so I, I kind of do like a lot of a lot of the office work and coordinating. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's pretty cool to be able to kind of still have um, the creative angle in in. In, in my work life. Yeah, that's nice that you two can work together. And yeah. what has she done with this whole process? Like, has she found a lot of support as a caregiver? And um, yeah, I mean, my wife's just, she's just kind of like, gets like, figures it out and gets it done. Um, she kind of learned everything in the hospital and then her and I have just kind of figured it out together and She's just an like really strong woman. I mean, we live in a, a 
we live literally like right now by meadows like you could ski to our house and we get a lot of snow and she just you know she's just that was something i used to do is just remove snow and deal with the firewood and like all of those things she's just she just does it all she's just kind of like the woman that like gets it all done <laughs> somehow gets it all done on top of being a mom and cooking and everything else uh, so sounds like uh, a, a huge gift and blessing in your life yeah and um you know she's friends uh with some people that have lost their husbands and um, some other really strong women in, in the community. So I'm sure that she has a little support network there, but she's just, yeah, she's just one of those women that just, she doesn't really like feel bad for herself. She just kind of goes and gets it done. Yeah. Adam's got a pretty amazing wife too. I mean, it's changes everybody's life, you know? Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm glad you um so getting into some of that creative talk what have you found to maximize your recovery and improve your quality of life like when you were saying you know discovering don't buy the wrong vehicle or you know like what are what's give us some of your couple really helpful tips or whatever um yeah i mean i think for us keeping things simple uh you know when you get when you first get hurt and you realize that you're not, you know, not, I mean, some people walk again, but a lot of people don't, most people don't. And you realize that you're just, you're going to be in a chair. So you have like all these things to consider, um, to make life feasible. And obviously a lot of those big ones are modifying, modifying your home, getting a vehicle that's adapted to, um, a disabled person, um, choosing the right chair, all that stuff. So like for us, it was just kind of keeping it simple and trying to um, minimize the financial impact. Um, so we just, we got pretty lucky. We had an immense amount of community support and the house that we own was, it's like a small, like it's like a small house, but it's a, like a two, two-story house and it's kind of like a tree house so um one of the big challenges was like well how am I gonna get into the house because our downstairs is basically our son's room in a garage and an entryway and then the gist of the house is upstairs we have a, um you know our kitchen our living room and then our master bedroom and and, and bathroom so um you know, through high fives, I was put in touch with another quad um, who uh, used a boat lift to get upstairs. All right. I guess it's a, well, the one that I have is, a, um, I think it's a jet ski lift. And um, anyways, we got lucky and a woman that he knows had um, one that she wasn't using and she donated it to me and I had another guy just kind of modify it. So I basically have like a little shed and a jet ski lift with a remote that kind of like takes me from the driveway up to the deck and then there's a sliding door and I can get into my house. So, um, wow. just Is like all times of the year, it doesn't matter what the weather is. Yeah. They kind of like built like a shed on top of it. So it's like a platform and um a, a guy that the contractor friend of ours was able to uh like kind of make it make it like a little shed that kind of resembles our house pretty simple design um and it was pretty inexpensive and um yeah so you know i'm just lucky to have <laughs> yeah i mean because you look at uh the like lifts that you would get like an ada lift run like $20,000. And I think we were able to do the whole lift thing for like $6,000. Um, and it's been bomber like it's it should knock on wood. <laughs> um, so that was awesome. And then um, the things that we did in our house were, you know, pretty simple. We just like opened the floor plan up and, um, you know, made the bathroom uh, 
you know, I was just lucky that we were, it was a pretty simple uh, remodel and just opened up the bathroom. So we were able to utilize a roll in shower situation and um, it doesn't really feel like a handy cap. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like doesn't feel like a handicap house. That was like something my wife studied interior design, and that was like kind of a big thing for her was to like not have a house that you had like grab bars and that kind of stuff all over the place. Um, so it feels like pretty normal for the most part. Um, so that was a huge thing. Um, the vehicle situation. Um, was a big thing too. Um, I was fortunate enough to have some money raised when I got hurt and I was um, awarded a grant and um, just had some pretty good financial support and I was able to get a Sprinter van and uh, we didn't really do much to the Sprinter van. We just kind of took out um, two seats. There's like a three rows of seats and we just took out two of the seat benches and sold those and put in what's called like a super arm lift. Um, it doesn't take up much room. And so I use that, it kind of like comes down and you connect it to your chair and then it like lifts you up. It's kind of like a, um, it's like almost like a swing. It like swings you in and out of the van. Um, so that was like quite a bit less expensive than some of the other lifts to get you into your van. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm also lucky that I have like enough function that, I mean, I really only had to put a lift in and like we put a manual swivel seat on the driver's, on the driver's seat and then I have hand controls. And, you know, there was like all these other things that we considered doing, like we were gonna put like a automatic door and like an automatic swivel seat and like, when you start to look at all that, it goes from like $12,000 to like $30,000. So I was like, yeah, well, we're, we're going to just try and do everything as much manual as we can. And so we did so, that. And it, sorry, it do was, you drive then? What's that? Are you able to drive? Yeah. Yeah. I, I started driving. Like that was the other thing. Like when I got home and I talked to this, friend of mine who's a quad too and has quite a bit less function than, than me is big thing was like dude you gotta you gotta drive as soon as you possibly can because um like that was that's been the thing that's given me the most freedom and has allowed me to kind of go out and venture on my own so that was um that was a huge step in my recovery um but going back to it it was like um the door to our van, like to a sprinter van is, is quite heavy. And I had no clue, like if I was going to be able to like real, realistically do this, but we just decided that we were going to go for it. And it was definitely a struggle for a while. Um, but it's gotten to the point where like, you, I've just like figured out how to open and close it. And, um, and I can like manually get around in my chair and, um, Long story short, it saved us a lot of money and it also um, kind of just forced me to learn how to do something that was quite difficult at first. So. Yeah, I've heard that we interviewed one other guy so far and it's, it's you know, really freeing and eye-opening to, to have a goal like that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to figure this out one way or another and then Look at what happened. It just totally opened up your life. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, I know, like, you know, I have like dreams of, uh, of like, m like making our Sprinter van um, sort of more, like we can camp in it and stuff, but it's mm -hmm. not set up like to do it super easily. But I can like camp in it independently. Like I throw these pads down, so like you don't. Like you don't have to have the fanciest like camper van set up to find ways to um, like do the camper van, like adaptive, like camping lifestyle. It can mm -hmm. be kind of modified, um, simple. And like, it's my daily driver too. So like, it's not something that I wanna have, like I enjoy having like all the space in there. Um, 
like sometimes I'm able to work out of there or like if I'm at a camp or whatever and I just like need to get some like alone time it's kind of nice to just go in there and chill and um so like I I kind of like I get claustrophobic so it's I think it's just kind of nice to keep things as simple as possible and then you don't have to like all, when you get all the mechanics involved if they break or something like that it's just like it can be like a major setback so so you're able to get yourself in and out of your chair is that right yeah yeah i can transfer in and out of my chair well, that's awesome yeah yes definitely um lucky to have that enough function to do that so on top of that then like do you have goals that you continuously are setting for yourself since you you know were able to do so many things all your athletics and your car and, and what yeah you i mean i think it's always just like trying to um become more and more independent um that's always a, like a big goal for my, for me and so there's just certain times where it's like you know i don't i don't i remember when i was we had, i don't know i think it was a year year or two into the injury and like a big thing for me it was being able to like go down to like Santa Cruz on my own and like camp in the van and not have my wife or kid with me or like just go with my son without my wife camping for a day or two and um so like you know I, I did that and um and now one of my goals and it's been a goal is to um get back into skiing and currently the um skiing equipment they have for quads just I just don't like it like you have to strap your hands to these outriggers and um you need a lot of support to do it and I know um like with my bike I can be like super independent I can go and bike around in the mountains on my own and um I, I think that there's definitely an opportunity to build or design a new adaptive sit ski for quads where you could get in and ski on your own. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of my goals is to maybe have a hand in figuring that out and get out and ski and hopefully design a piece of equipment that might help other quads. Um, so that's one I've been thinking about and trying to figure out how to accomplish and I haven't really got there yet, but Our website would be like the perfect spot for you to find other people to work with on that. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need an engineer and somebody that's willing to do it. But they make it like there's a bike that um, uh, this company in uh, Canada is making. It's called an, uh, it's, it's the Bowhead, and the, the bike articulates um, and it has three wheels. And I like envision just like something similar to the bike, but with skis. Um, and I think that would be uh, an opportunity for mid-level to low-level quads to and high-level quads to be able to kind of go out and ski on their own on, on relatively um, difficult terrain. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, like stuff like that. And then obviously, you know, being able to do more things with my son and my wife and are you finding you said you're six years post recovery is that right yeah i'll be it'll be six years in, eight, in april um are you finding that you're continuing to make progress with your physical recovery like from a moment from a movement perspective are um so like i don't yeah like i don't feel like i ever really got much more function back i think my tricep got stronger um but for the most part, like my function kind of stayed pretty much the same since my injury. Um, what has happened, and I would say continues to happen to an extent is um, I've just learned to use what I have like much better. Um, obviously when you first get hurt, it's kind of like being born again. It's like crawling to a, being able to like kind of move and then, you know, I've just like figured out little like little tricks throughout the way um, to better transfer, um, you know, just how to use your hands, like what you have with your hands better, um, mm -hmm. you know, using your arms, 
try and do whatever you can to just like maintain strength too. Like I, I work out regularly. Um, and so, um, what does just, the workout look like for you? Do you go off site in your house? What do you do? Um, so currently I, I work out at high fives once a week and then I have like bands and dumbbells and, um, I have, I just got these things. They're called, it's called like a split rope and it's sort of like a jump rope, but it's like kind of cut in half and uses kind of like a thicker rope that you use and you just kind of like twirl it around and I just got those. Those are cool. Um, so I have things that I like since, since the pandemic, I've just kind of built like a workout routine at the house. Um, so, and then obviously like I, uh, we just started playing rugby again, but we usually do that like two or three days a week uh, in the fall and the winter. And I bike regularly in the summer just um, with my, my adaptive uh, off-road hand cycle. And whenever I can, I go try and go surfing. So, um, yeah, that sounds cool. Um you no, know, it'd be great. I don't know if your wife would be up for it or not, but I would love to see just a little short video workout to post yeah. on our site to help others that necessarily weren't such strong athletes before their injury to, you know, encourage them to continue to move and why that's advantageous. But I mean, yeah, I'm, we could totally do that. I would love to feature you on our site doing that. I think it'd be really helpful. Yeah, I think um, the things that I do at home are um, definitely things that um, people with, you know, my level or slightly above my level or even slightly below my level could could definitely incorporate into their lives. Okay, well, I'd love to talk to you about that offline. Sure. Um, and one last question for you. You ready? Yeah. What advice would you give to your previous self? following your injury after all this year these years of learning oh I think like the the biggest thing is just to like slow slow down just kind of take things in um have more appreciation for um what what's going on it's super easy to like take take life for granted and so when you have a, a life-altering injury it's pretty eye-opening to um recognize like what you had and uh, how awesome it was and then when something happens like a spinal cord or some whatever life altering injury or traumatic situation somebody goes through it's really simple it's like really eye opening and um so just slowing down and just appreciating life for what it is and um, not not take for granted yeah um I think that would be for sure my biggest thing and just having like more appreciation for those around you and um, do more to help others and be grateful for all the things that all the gratitude and stuff that other things that people have done for you um yeah for me it's just like i feel like i took took a lot of things for granted so um, i try and try and recognize that more now that I'm injured. Yeah. And your son is 10, you said, what grade is he in? Yeah, he's 10, he's in, he, he's, uh, he's in fourth grade. So. What's his name? Uh, his name is Ebbett, E-B-B-E-T-T. -T. Ebbett. Yeah. Well, what a blessing. Um, Adam, do you wanna ask anything before we sign off? You haven't heard from you much. Uh, well, you know, we could talk for a while. There's all kinds of questions I could ask. Um, but that's it. Are we done? We're done with the questions then? Well, why don't you um, go ahead and ask one? Because we have a little bit of time left. And yeah. Go ahead. What was your, uh, what was your Asia, Asia score originally? Oh, man. I can't even remember. Uh, Asia A is... Go through, go, what is, like, I don't even remember what they all are. Uh, a is complete. A is complete, and then there's B is uh, within two vertebrae. You have, you have sensation, two vertebrae down, I believe. Yeah, and I'm, then, I'm A, B, I'm incomplete. 
um, and I can I have like sensation, but I don't have any um, movement below my chest. Okay. Yeah. But you do have do you have how do you have sensation like in your feet? Uh, just like pins and needles, basically from I got I have like less sensation, kind of like in my um, like torso, kind of um, core area. And then once you get to like my butt and I think like past my knees and into my um, feet, it's like pins and needles tingling. Like I can feel like the pressure of somebody touching me, but like if you were to um, like put like a knife in my leg, I wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. Like I'd feel it, but it wouldn't hurt. So. And uh, one other thing I want to mention, uh, because I'm a quad skier, is that I'd like I'd like to hear more about your ideas over time around that. Because I'm I'm in the uh, the enabling technologies by Dynamic, the by ski with three inches of travel, and you know uh, I'm I'm on tether without outriggers, so yeah. I'm not using outriggers. I have enough trunk that I'm able to kind of navigate and pretend that I'm snowboarding. And, uh, but obviously, you know, I have to have an instructor behind me. And like you mentioned, it takes a whole lot for me to get out for the day, yeah. you know, between, you know, relying on the resorts, one thing, but then, uh, you know, an instructor and, and luckily we have a program that allows me to, you know, ski in a way that I can afford to ski, uh, because it'd be way too prohibitively expensive otherwise. Um, so I get, I get some great help there, but it's some, like you're mentioning, it's something that it takes a lot of resources to pull together just to get out and, and ride for the day. Yeah, for so. sure. Um, yeah, man, I'm like super convinced that there's a better, a better way for quads to ski. Um, you just got to find the right people to, to figure it out, but. I, I don't know right. if you've done adaptive mountain biking or anything, but, um, you know, I can go down like pretty steep hills on a mountain bike independently and get in and out of my mountain bike on my own. And, uh, I, I know that there's gotta be a way to do that on a ski. It's just kind of, um, upgrading the, the tech and having a little right. bit of time. Um, so hopefully one day that will happen. So in our website, yeah. Ooh, that's what we want to create is like community groups of people where you can actually ping everyone and say hey let's get on with each other and brainstorm this you know what has your experience been who do you know you know i mean I, I feel like it's the perfect format for that so maybe we'll try to put a panel together <laughs> yeah it'd be cool to get um like some of these adaptive mountain bike designers together with some of the adaptive sit ski designers together and um you know with with you know quads that have some experience on skis and just kind of hammer out a few designs that would be pretty super that would be pretty cool okay well i will make note of that for sure yeah and once we get things rolling with mods for quads we'll have to have a ski day over here in at Aspen snowmass yeah we sounds good. Yeah, we're, we already had our first annual. We're going to do another one. And we're, we have a lot of um, adaptive trails being built, too. Do you have a lot of that going on in there in California? Um, yeah, more and more. It's kind of like becoming, we have a lot of good mountain bike trails here. Uh, are you talking about like ski trails or mountain bike trails? No, mountain bike, like adaptive for mountain bikes. Yeah, totally. We have some of that here. Um, and then the bike that I have is a reactive adaptations bike. I know Jake um, is might even, or no, he might, is he an Aspen? I can't remember if he's an Aspen or maybe Butte. in Crested Butte, Crested Butte, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's cool. A lot of the bike trails are sort of jumping on board and it's just making those trails 40 inch and trying to keep them as, um, on camber as, as, as they can, but the new bikes that you can articulate, they don't even really need to be on camber. It's just the quads can't run them as well yet. They're starting to figure that out. So, Well, it'll be exciting to see what comes up next with everything. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been crazy. Like, since I've been hurt, I mean, I remember that was one of the first things I looked into was like the mountain bike stuff and the evolution of where they were when I first got hurt to where they are now is, is pretty insane. So um, right. it's definitely been cool to see. So, and I, I've also noticed that like a lot of the things that people in the adaptive world figure out so a lot of times translate into new technology for um, able-bodied people as well. So it's cool. Well, that's what I always say. I think you guys are some of the most amazing healers out there. It's just that we need to showcase that, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to follow yeah. up with you on this workout video and hopefully this sits keeping too. Cool. Yeah, thanks for um, thanks for having me chat with you guys. Thank you.